What if I told you that while Russia is embroiled in a devastating war, China is quietly taking advantage, securing massive economic gains? This ancient Chinese strategy is called, loot a burning house. Let's explore how China is applying this strategy to Russia. In Chinese strategy, loot a burning house means exploiting a weakened state to one's advantage. Historically, this strategy has been used in various contexts, such as during periods of internal conflict or natural disasters. Imagine a scenario where a house is on fire, while the occupants are busy dealing with the chaos, a neighbor sneaks in to grab valuable items. This is essentially what China is doing with Russia right now. Let's take a quick historical example to understand this better. In ancient times, during the fall of the Tang Dynasty, neighboring states took advantage of China's internal turmoil by seizing border territories and demanding favorable trade terms. Fast forward to today, we see a similar pattern with China capitalizing on Russia's vulnerabilities brought about by the Ukraine war and international sanctions. China and Russia have a long and complex history that has oscillated between rivalry and cooperation. During the Cold War, their relationship was marked by intense competition despite both being communist states. This tension even led to a brief but violent border conflict in 1969 along the Ashuri River. Each country saw the other as a significant rival for leadership within the communist world. However, the end of the Cold War and the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 marked a turning point. Both countries began to see the benefits of cooperation over rivalry. In the 21st century, under the leadership of Xi Jinping in China and Vladimir Putin in Russia, their relationship has strengthened considerably. This cooperation is strategic, both nations share a common interest in countering Western influence, particularly that of the United States. In the last two decades, China and Russia have expanded their economic ties significantly. They've signed numerous agreements to collaborate on energy projects, infrastructure, and technology. Politically, they support each other on the global stage, often voting in unison at the United Nations Security Council. For example, they have jointly opposed sanctions on North Korea and have coordinated their responses to various international crises. The Ukraine-Russia war, which began in 2022, has had a profound impact on Russia's economy and its standing in the world. The conflict has led to severe economic sanctions from the United States, the European Union, and other Western nations. These sanctions target key sectors of the Russian economy, such as finance, energy, and defense, severely restricting Russia's ability to engage in international trade and finance. As a result, Russia has faced significant economic challenges. The value of the Russian ruble has fluctuated wildly, inflation has soared, and the country has experienced a substantial decrease in foreign investment. Major international companies have pulled out of the Russian market, and Russia has been cut off from crucial financial networks like SWIFT. This economic isolation has forced Russia to turn to its remaining allies for support, with China being the most critical partner. China has stepped in to buy Russian oil and gas, often at discounted prices, which has provided Russia with much-needed revenue. For instance, in the first half of 2024, China increased its imports of Russian crude oil by 24% while paying nearly 12% less than the previous year. Moreover, China has invested heavily in Russian infrastructure and energy projects. The power of Siberia pipelines, which transport natural gas from Russia to China, are prime examples of this deepening economic cooperation. The first pipeline, Power of Siberia, started operating in 2019, and now there are plans to expand this network with the Power of Siberia 2 and 3 projects. These pipelines are crucial for Russia as they help it diversify its energy exports away from Europe, which has imposed bans on Russian energy imports. Politically, China has provided diplomatic support to Russia. Beijing has refrained from condemning Russia's actions in Ukraine and has instead criticized Western sanctions. This diplomatic backing is essential for Russia, as it seeks to maintain some semblance of international support. In summary, the Ukraine-Russia war has significantly weakened Russia economically and diplomatically, making it more reliant on China. China has capitalized on the situation, using the opportunity to secure energy resources at lower prices, gain strategic economic advantages, and strengthen its geopolitical influence. This dynamic is a modern example of the ancient Chinese strategy of loot a burning house, where China benefits from Russia's turmoil. Let's start with how China is getting a great deal on energy from Russia. Think of it like finding a store that sells everything you need at a massive discount. Since the Ukraine-Russia war began, Russia has been hit hard by Western sanctions, which have made it difficult for them to sell oil and gas at regular market prices. China saw an opportunity here and stepped in as a major buyer. For example, in the first half of 2024, 
China increased its imports of Russian crude oil by 24%, but the kicker is they paid nearly 12% less than the previous year. This isn't just a small savings, it's a substantial financial benefit that helps China keep its energy costs low. This deal is crucial for China's economy, which heavily relies on energy imports to power its industries and sustain growth. By purchasing energy at these lower prices, China is effectively capitalizing on Russia's urgent need for economic partners due to the sanctions. This isn't just a one-off deal either. China has consistently been buying Russian energy at discounted rates, ensuring a steady and affordable supply of the resources it needs to fuel its vast industrial base. This move allows China to divert resources it would have otherwise spent on more expensive energy to other areas of its economy, strengthening its overall economic position. Next, let's look at another strategic move by China, its heavy investments in Russia's Far East. This region is incredibly rich in natural resources like oil, gas, and minerals, but it's also one of the least developed parts of Russia. With Russia facing economic struggles due to the sanctions, China has seized the opportunity to invest heavily in this area. Chinese companies have become the largest foreign investors in the Far East, funding major infrastructure projects and energy developments. These investments are not just about making a quick profit, they are long-term strategic plays. For instance, Chinese investments in the region's infrastructure help develop transportation networks and industrial facilities, which are crucial for resource extraction and export. This kind of development also creates jobs and boosts the local economy, making China an indispensable partner for Russia. By investing in the Far East, China secures access to a wealth of natural resources that are essential for its own development. It's like planting seeds that will grow and bear fruit for many years to come. This ensures a steady flow of resources into China while also increasing its influence over this strategically important region. For Russia, these investments bring much-needed capital and development to an area that has long been underdeveloped, helping to mitigate the impact of Western sanctions. Finally, let's discuss China's involvement in major infrastructure projects, particularly the power of Siberia pipelines. These pipelines are a critical part of Russia's strategy to shift its energy exports from Europe, which has imposed bans on Russian energy, to Asia. China has been a key partner in this transition. The Power of Siberia 1 pipeline, which started operations in 2019, transports natural gas from Russia to China. This project alone was a massive undertaking, spanning thousands of kilometers and involving billions of dollars in investment. Now, plans for Power of Siberia 2 and 3 are underway, which will further increase the gas supply to China. These pipelines ensure that China has a long-term, reliable supply of natural gas at favorable terms. This is crucial for China's energy security, allowing it to diversify its energy sources and reduce its reliance on any single supplier. These infrastructure projects are more than just pipes in the ground, they represent a significant deepening of the economic relationship between China and Russia. For China, they provide a stable and affordable source of energy, which is vital for sustaining its economic growth. For Russia, these projects bring in much-needed investment and help diversify its energy export markets away from Europe, which is increasingly off-limits due to sanctions. In summary, China's strategic moves to secure discounted energy imports, invest in the Russian Far East, and participate in major infrastructure projects like the Power of Siberia pipelines demonstrate a clear application of the loot a burning house strategy. By taking advantage of Russia's economic and geopolitical vulnerabilities, China is ensuring its own growth and stability while significantly strengthening its influence over its neighbor. Let's dig into the trade relationship between China and Russia, which is highly imbalanced and skewed in favor of China. Imagine two kids trading baseball cards, but one kid always ends up with the rare cards while the other gets stuck with the commons. This analogy perfectly describes the trade dynamics between these two countries. China is Russia's largest trading partner, but the reverse isn't true. In 2023, Russia was only China's sixth largest trading partner. This imbalance gives China significant leverage in their economic relationship. To put it into perspective, in 2023, China had a notable trade surplus with Russia. China exported goods worth $11.1 billion to Russia, but only imported $8.68 billion worth of goods from Russia. This means China sells much more to Russia than it buys, strengthening its economic position considerably. Furthermore, over half of Russia's exports to China are energy-related, such as oil and gas. These exports are crucial for China, which has massive energy needs to fuel its economy. However, this dependency also means that Russia's economy relies heavily on these exports. This reliance gives China a significant upper hand in trade negotiations. 
When Russia needs to sell its oil and gas but faces international sanctions limiting its market options, it is forced to accept terms that favor China. It's a classic case of being stuck between a rock and a hard place for Russia, and China fully exploits this situation. For example, since the start of the Ukraine war and subsequent Western sanctions, Russia has faced significant challenges in selling its energy products. China stepped in, purchasing more oil and gas at lower prices. In the first half of 2024, China imported 24% more Russian crude oil but paid nearly 12% less than the previous year. These discounted prices are a lifeline for Russia but also a clear indication of China's economic leverage. By securing energy at lower costs, China not only meets its energy needs more cheaply but also strengthens its economic position globally. Beyond economics, China has also been very strategic diplomatically. Imagine a big brother stepping in to support a younger sibling during a schoolyard brawl. This is akin to China's diplomatic backing of Russia amidst the Ukraine conflict. Since the war began, China has provided substantial diplomatic support to Russia. Beijing has consistently refrained from condemning Russia's actions in Ukraine and has instead focused on criticizing Western sanctions. This diplomatic stance is vital for Russia, which is increasingly isolated on the international stage. For instance, at the United Nations and other international forums, China and Russia often support each other. They have jointly opposed sanctions on countries like North Korea and coordinated their responses to global issues, presenting a united front against Western policies. For China, this diplomatic maneuvering isn't just about supporting an ally, it's a calculated move to ensure its own economic and geopolitical gains. By standing by Russia, China secures a reliable partner that provides essential resources at favorable prices. This relationship is crucial for China, especially in securing long-term energy supplies. Additionally, this partnership helps China position itself as a leader in an alternative global alliance that counters Western influence, reshaping global power dynamics in its favor. During high-level meetings, such as those between Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, the strength of this partnership is evident. They often discuss and coordinate their strategies to support each other's national interests. For example, China's refusal to join Western sanctions against Russia and its continued economic engagement despite global pressure demonstrates its commitment to this partnership. China's strategic diplomatic support extends beyond mere words. It involves actions that have significant economic implications. By maintaining strong trade ties and investing in Russian infrastructure, China ensures that it remains a key player in Russia's economic recovery and growth. This not only helps Russia navigate through the tough sanctions but also ensures that China has a stable and favorable economic partner in the region. In summary, the economic and diplomatic relationship between China and Russia is heavily skewed in China's favor. China's economic dominance and strategic diplomatic support ensure it gains significant advantages while Russia, in its weakened state, becomes increasingly dependent on China. This dynamic perfectly illustrates the ancient Chinese strategy of loot a burning house, where China benefits from Russia's vulnerabilities, ensuring its own growth and stability while significantly strengthening its influence over its neighbor. Let's break down the ancient Chinese strategy of loot a burning house. Imagine a house on fire, the owners are in chaos, trying to save what they can. Now, picture a neighbor seeing this as an opportunity. While the owners are distracted, this neighbor sneaks in and takes valuables at a fraction of their worth. This is essentially what loot a burning house means, taking advantage of someone's misfortune to gain significant benefits. It's about exploiting a situation where the other party is too preoccupied with their problems to defend their interests. Now, let's apply this strategy to what China is doing with Russia amidst the Ukraine conflict. First, consider China's increased energy imports at discounted prices. Since the war began, Western sanctions have made it tough for Russia to sell its oil and gas at regular market prices. China stepped in, buying these resources at significant discounts. In the first half of 2024, China imported 24% more Russian crude oil but paid nearly 12% less than the previous year. This not only ensures that China has a steady supply of energy but also at a much lower cost, saving billions of dollars. Next, look at China's strategic investments in Russia's Far East. This region is rich in natural resources but underdeveloped. With Russia economically strained, China has invested heavily in infrastructure and resource extraction projects. Chinese companies are now the largest foreign investors in this region, funding major projects that will benefit them in the long run. For example, China has financed the development of transportation networks and industrial facilities, which are crucial for moving these resources back to China. This investment secures China access to these valuable resources while also boosting its influence in the region. 
Then there are the major infrastructure projects, like the power of Siberia pipelines. These pipelines transport natural gas from Russia to China, ensuring a long-term, reliable supply of energy. The Power of Siberia 1 pipeline started operating in 2019, and now, plans for Power of Siberia 2 and 3 are in progress. These projects involve thousands of kilometers of pipelines and billions of dollars in investment. For China, these pipelines mean a stable and affordable source of natural gas, which is crucial for its energy security and economic growth. For Russia, these projects bring in much-needed investment and help diversify its energy export markets, especially as Europe becomes less accessible due to sanctions. So, by securing discounted energy imports, investing heavily in Russia's Far East, and participating in major infrastructure projects, China is effectively using the Luda Burning House strategy. They're taking advantage of Russia's weakened position due to the Ukraine war and sanctions, securing long-term benefits for themselves. This strategy allows China to gain economic and strategic advantages while Russia is too preoccupied with its own problems to negotiate better terms. This dynamic is a textbook example of how an ancient strategy can be applied in modern geopolitics. China's actions are calculated and strategic, ensuring they maximize their benefits while Russia deals with its crises. By understanding and applying this strategy, China strengthens its economic position and extends its influence, illustrating how the principles of loot a burning house are very much alive today. China's strategic moves in Russia are not just about economics, they have significant implications for global power dynamics, particularly affecting US interests. Let's break this down. First, by securing discounted energy imports from Russia, China strengthens its energy security while reducing its dependence on other, potentially less reliable sources. This stability allows China to continue its rapid industrial growth, enhancing its economic power on the global stage. For the US, this means facing a more economically robust and energy-secure China, which could challenge American influence in Asia and beyond. Second, China's heavy investments in Russia's Far East and involvement in major infrastructure projects like the power of Siberia pipelines extend its influence into regions traditionally within Russia's sphere. This deepens China's economic and political ties with Russia, creating a bloc that can resist Western pressures more effectively. For example, these investments help Russia mitigate the effects of Western sanctions, providing it with the financial and infrastructural support needed to maintain its economy despite international isolation. Moreover, this closer Sino-Russian relationship poses a direct challenge to U.S. strategic interests. The United States has long aimed to limit Russian and Chinese influence globally, and their growing partnership complicates these efforts. This alliance can counterbalance U.S. influence in international organizations like the United Nations, where both countries often vote together against Western initiatives. This coordinated opposition can stymie U.S. efforts to promote its policies and interests globally. Additionally, the economic benefits China reaps from its relationship with Russia can be reinvested into its military and technological advancements. A stronger Chinese economy bolstered by cheap energy and strategic resources enables Beijing to enhance its military capabilities, further challenging U.S. military dominance, particularly in the Asia-Pacific region. This shift could lead to a new balance of power, where the U.S. finds it harder to project its influence and protect its interests. In summary, China's strategic exploitation of Russia's weakened state significantly alters the global geopolitical landscape. It bolsters China's economic and military power, strengthens its geopolitical alliance with Russia, and creates a formidable bloc that can challenge U.S. influence and interests worldwide. To wrap things up, China's application of the Luda Burning House strategy on Russia is a fascinating example of strategic exploitation during times of conflict. By buying discounted energy, investing in the Russian Far East, and participating in major infrastructure projects, China is not just securing economic gains but also reshaping global power dynamics. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video?